So uh, thank you for coming here today uh, to speak uh, about an incident that occurred over the weekend uh, here in the city of Des Moines. Um, I already put the press release out that described the details of the carjacking that occurred uh, where uh, two victims were held at gunpoint, uh, guns pointed at their head, uh, their property was taken, and their vehicle was taken. They reported that to our officers uh, that they flagged down on the street and they were shortly thereafter taken into custody uh, by the Federal Way Police Department in the stolen vehicle of this carjacking. So uh, our detectives came out that night and uh, started the investigation and have been working diligently to get that case filed within the uh, 72 hour period that we have to file cases uh, on a rush file basis. Uh, I consider these suspects to be dangerous to our community. Uh, they were armed, uh, they used their weapons. I, I know before uh, this press conference, you had a chance to speak with one of the victims. I also had a chance to speak with him uh, before this meeting. And he shared with me that he was very uh, angry when he learned that uh, the four suspects that had been taken into custody were already released. And he also expressed to me how scared he was that night and the fact uh, that the suspects didn't even try to hide their identity uh, made him feel like they intended to shoot or kill him because they weren't even trying to hide their identity. They were so bold in their uh, acting out their crime. So he was extremely, extremely scared is, is what he prevented or presented to me. Uh, I can tell you, uh, I am extremely disappointed uh, with the decision to release uh, these serious violent offenders uh, back into our community with seemingly no consequence. Uh, during a time when violent crime in our community, gun crime, is escalating at levels we have not seen in years, um, I do not feel that this case was taken seriously uh, by our justice system. And I think it's a travesty that these dangerous suspects were released back into our community. It's a top priority for law enforcement. Our, it's our job, it's our main core mission to keep our communities safe. When we do that and bring these suspects uh, into custody, we expect the system to do their job. And in this case, the system uh, did not take these two victims seriously. And I'll tell you, the criminal justice in King County, the criminal justice system in King County failed our communities and they failed these two victims. So a couple of things and I'll open it up to questions. There have been a couple of issues that have come up that I want to address. Um, I can tell you that I did receive a telephone call first thing this morning from a senior uh, person at the King County Prosecutor's Office and we did discuss this case. Uh, I can tell you that the communication that our detectives had with the prosecutor's office, the information we knew at the time was that the adult suspect, the 18-year-old adult suspect, was released on his personal recognizance, and the three juvenile victims were released on home detention. Uh, I find that extremely unacceptable on a serious case like this where we were so close to even being more uh, serious uh, with the shooting. So we talked a little bit about that and, and the uh, senior person at the prosecutor's office expressed to me that in the adult case that they did in fact object to release. And uh, he read to me the notes that the prosecutor had, that they had requested $100,000 bail, that the um, suspect 
because there's only one 18-year-old suspect, was a danger to the community, and that uh, they should be held in custody. And based upon all of that information and that strenuous objection, the judge still chose to release that suspect. So in the juvenile court, when uh, especially you have a chance to talk to the victim and, and you know and understand that they had a gun pointed in their face, that the suspect racked around uh, for further effect uh, while the gun was pointed in the victim's face, while they carried out this crime, that's a serious big deal. That's bigger than home detention. Go home on home detention and we'll come talk about this later. So uh, there was some discussion about a checkbox issue on the SIR form. And I, I had this discussion with uh, the member of the King County Prosecutor's Office this morning and I'm shocked that this information was put out by a spokesman for the King County Prosecutor's Office. I cannot believe that they would say the reason why these serious violent felons that were a massive danger to our community were released because a checkbox was not checked. I can't believe how tone deaf that is to our community. Are they not paying attention to the violent crime that's happening on a daily basis that they cannot read the police report, read the information, and rely on a checkbox on a form that automatically defaults to objection to release, that automatically defaults to no objection. We've talked to the prosecutor's office for the past year. We need to get this fixed because sometimes when the officers are working a 12-hour shift, chasing criminal armed suspects through the woods in the middle of the night, if they miss that box, the fact that these violent offenders, the prosecutor's office uses that as an excuse to not carry that out and actively pursue keeping these suspects into custody is beyond belief. It's absolutely tone deaf to their essential job along with police to keep our community safe. So um, I can answer more questions on that. I cannot believe that they publicly put that out as an excuse for not doing their job. Um, on a different note, uh, we're working with a victim. His car was stolen. He's got the type of car that gets started with the push button, so you need a key fob. That was lost during the pursuit, the chase. Um, he doesn't have the money to pay 500 plus dollars to get himself the key fob. His insurance won't cover it. So I just want you to know, I wanna give a plug to our Des Moines Police Officers Guild. They offered and are going to pay the full amount to get this victim his key fob back so he can get his car back and get back on with his life. So I'm very proud of our officers for, um, for doing that to help this victim. Okay, with that being said, I'm open to any questions you might have. You can tell I'm, I'm not very happy that these suspects are out on the street. I think they should be in jail. Uh, Chief, is there any remedy for you now that they have been released? Can you take any action? Are you working with the prosecutors to maybe try and get them put back in jail? And understanding that there was a mistake on that. Yes, we have been in discussions with the King County Prosecutor's Office. They're talking with our detectives. We're continuing to work on the, the paperwork to get them back into custody. So they have um, hearings coming up, and we want to get them back into custody. And, and I know this uh, press release is a little critical of the King County Prosecutor's Office, but as I've mentioned to them this morning, as a police chief, whose responsibility it is to keep our community safe, I can no longer sit back and stay quiet 
when these types of incidents continue to occur. We need to shed light on what's happening in our county, in our area, and do what we can to address violent crime. And releasing these suspects before the prosecutor's office even had all of the documentation from our detectives, they didn't have all of the information and they still chose it was not a big enough deal to hold them into custody. So. What about the judges who ordered this release? Because I mean, check box or not, it was at their discretion to make this order. Yes, um, I have had some discussions uh, this morning about that. And um, from my understanding, I don't have all of the details. From my understanding in King County, there are specific policies on how judges are to handle certain cases in the King County juvenile system. And my understanding uh, is with the information presented uh, in the hearing uh, to the judge that it fit into the policy that included that the person could be released on home detention. So whether it's the judge, if you wanna blame the judge or the system and the policy that's put in place where the judges have to act, that's, that's up to you. What I'm saying is we have a broken system in King County that is failing our community. It's failing our community and keeping our community safe. Uh, speaking to that system, you know, going off of what you're saying about the press release and also the statement from someone within the prosecuting attorney's office, they're say, they pointed to this box not being checked as the reason that the judge used to counter what the prosecutor's uh, attorneys argued as far as keeping them um, in custody. So to your point, do you think that there is uh, a disconnect between the Des Moines Police Department and the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office? I don't think there's a specific disconnect between the Des Moines Police Department and the King County Prosecutor's Office. I think there's a disconnect between law enforcement in King County and the King County Prosecutor's Office. Now, when I spoke with a member of the King County Prosecutor's Office this morning, he said they have been working with the King County Jail for over the past year to try to get them to change and correct their form. So I think this is an issue. Uh, I looked at the case, I've seen the form. That patrol officer that filled out that paperwork on the weekend uh, had worked 12 hours. He was on his 12th hour. He'd been out all night with that and he missed one checkbox. But uh, above that, and, and I'm not going to excuse the fact of the facts of this case, which is the victim had a gun in his face and his property stolen and his car jacked, which, so a checkbox shouldn't matter. If we're doing our job and looking out for the community, we should be paying attention to that. Uh, and a checkbox shouldn't overrule whether that person is in custody or not. But on that same form, it says, uh, request a, tw a 72 hour rush file. That box was marked yes. So I, I don't wanna get into check boxes because I think it's ridiculous that they would even say that, that they were that tone deaf to the safety of our community that they would even say that. Are, are there any other, I know, I know you said you didn't really want to get into about check boxes, but are there any other check boxes if left unchecked would have this same result? Because I guess uh, you mentioned earlier that this is something that's been happening and if this is something that's been happening and, and you guys know that it's been happening it seems to me that you would know that checkbox needs to be checked yeah i, I think to my knowledge that's the only checkbox that has that's the only area on the form that to my knowledge that has an auto uh, default to no objection to release and it's a form that is controlled by the king county jail and the King County Jail refuses to change that form. And I don't know why. So a, a mistake was made at the end of an officer's shift. But the I, officers can check the box, right? The officer, when they fill that out, could yeah. have checked that and box. And if they don't, then it defaults. To Correct. It. Okay. So that, that's kind of what I was getting at. Is yeah. if, if they don't check the box, then you guys already know that it, it's going to default to that. 
So, I don't know that we. I don't know that we know that. To be honest with you, okay. the first time I heard that and was aware of that being an issue was my conversation with uh, the prosecutor's office this morning. I was not aware of that. I don't know how much that our officers were aware of that. So, I don't know that that's fair to say. I can tell you, as a result, we're going to have a training bulletin put out with our staff to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Um, but my contention is still it should have never resulted in those violent felons being released. So just to be clear, on the entire form, that blend box means the difference between them being in custody and not, like that one checkbox? I think you'll have to ask the King County Prosecutor's Office about that. I was going to ask, uh, similar to that question, do you think the judge saw that the checkbox was not checked and made the decision influenced by that? Or I, I don't know what the judge, I can't speak for the judge. Um, anything in regards to the officer that actually put, uh, that actually filled out the paperwork and everything, have you had a chance to speak with them about, you know, where they are right now, knowing that because they, you know, missed this one box that these suspects are out on the streets? No, because I didn't have any idea that that was the excuse given for them not doing their job until this morning. What does the SIR actually stand for? Subject immediate release or? No, uh, I don't know, yeah. Sus subject investigative report, okay. suspect investigative, does any, Mike, do you know? Okay, okay. sorry, I don't know. Um, have you had this? Have you heard about this issue with other police jurisdictions in King County, and they've also been dealing with these, you know, these kinds of issues? I haven't. I the first I was aware of this was this morning, and it only made me more angry when I heard that this was being used as an excuse. I have a question for you, Chief. Uh, one of our readers thinks that perhaps the timing of this press re conference and reaction is related to the election coming up Tuesday, is it? No, uh, I think you've heard clearly from the victim, you've heard from me, somebody got a gun put in their face this weekend and thought they were gonna be killed in the middle of a carjacking and I believe they were released from custody for reasons that were not legitimate. And I felt as a police chief, I couldn't sit back and allow our system to fail our community any longer. And I needed to bring it up. Chief, can you just speak to the increase in violence, gun violence in King County and in the region? Because it seems like we're seeing it at levels we haven't seen before. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, we participate with the King County Prosecutor's Office in the shots uh, fired information that those bulletins come out daily to law enforcement. Uh, there was a big article in the newspaper just this week about the increase in the number of uh, violent crimes associated with guns. Although homicides are down, the number of people shot and injured is up and the gun incidents at the shootings is up. Uh, as you're aware, we've had significant issues along Pacific Highway South with violence on the Kent and Des Moines border. So this is an issue that has continued to get worse. And um, it's certainly a time that we need to pay attention and address it. Um, bouncing off that question, if you, uh, can you speak to what we seem to be seeing more minors being associated with these kinds of crimes and committing these kind of uh, violent crimes in particular? Yeah, we've been seeing this over the past several years and, and I'll tell you, the information that we are hearing from uh, criminals and suspects and, and often um, uh, more of the organized crime or gang members are recruiting and using juveniles to commit the violent crimes with guns because they even understand that they're not being held accountable and nothing truly will happen to them in the juvenile justice system. So why not utilize juveniles to commit these violent crimes? Because uh, generally speaking, nothing happens. And uh, so they're essentially getting away with it, using juveniles to carry out their crimes. 
Have you spoken to other police chiefs about this checkbox issue? Uh, we I actually I just had a meeting uh, earlier today with several uh, police chiefs in South King County. Are they reporting something similar? Um, they had not. They had not uh, brought that up when I talked about this issue and, and the fact that there was going to be a press conference this afternoon. So it's a relatively new issue as of today, I presume? No, I, uh, based upon my conversation with the uh, King County Prosecutor's Office this morning, um, I was told this has been an issue for about the past year and that the Prosecutor's Office had actively been working with the King County Jail trying to get this issue fixed. They were having no luck with the jail. So they uh, said, they told me that they've been trying to get this information out to police departments. And, but I was not aware of it. I, I don't know if our detectives had been made aware of it or how they were notifying police departments uh, of this issue. But I will say one more time, I think this concept of a checkbox is BS and I'm calling them on it. 